Hello and welcome to the first day of Unit 3. To start off with, I have two warm-ups today because the lesson itself is pretty short. We're going to talk about a little, little bit of vocab and then uh, we'll just do a few examples. Um, so the, the warm-ups that I have for you are previous a AP problems. They're multiple choice. So you can read them to yourself and pause the video if you need a little, more, little bit more time. Okay, uh, welcome back. So for warm-up number one, it said that I have some function f of x, um, and it wants me to find the derivative of f at negative one. So all I need to do is find the derivative of f first. So f prime is going to be negative 3x squared plus 1 uh, minus 1 over x squared. Right, that derivative of 1 over x is the same as the derivative of x to the negative first. So drop the power down, makes the sign negative, and decreasing negative 1 by 1 gives me the negative 2. That's why the x is still in the denominator. And then I just want to evaluate this at negative 1. Let's see. So let's see, a negative 1 squared is positive. And a negative 1 squared is also positive. So I have a uh, negative 3 plus 1 minus 1. My answer should have been D, negative 3. All right, on to the second warm-up. Uh, it just says, what's the derivative of this function? Um, Get used to seeing this notation because we're going to see that a lot today. Uh, this is just the derivative of this with respect to x. That's important. Uh, uh, what we're taking the derivative with respect to. Okay. So let's see. Um, this is got a lot going on. There's uh, a few chain rules involved. So we could think of this as cosine of three x cubed squared. And if we do it that way, then we can see the chain rules. So the derivative of the outside would be 2 cosine of x cubed. Okay. And the inside is cosine of x cubed. So the derivative of cosine x cubed is negative sine x cubed, but there's yet another function inside, x to the third, so we have to multiply by the derivative of that function as well, which is going to be 3x squared, okay? which will give me i. Uh, negative 6x squared sine x cubed cosine x cubed. All right. Oops. So up to this point, we've been dealing with functions that have been defined explicitly. And a, an explicit function is any function of the form y equals f of x, uh, where y appears by itself on one side of the equation and is defined in terms of x. Okay. Uh, some good examples are y equals x squared, y equals 3x plus 5, y equals cosine of x, y equals uh, x squared minus 4 over x plus 3. These are all explicitly defined functions. The variable y is defined in terms of x and y appears by itself. Okay. Today we're going to be talking about implicit functions and how we find the derivative of those functions. An implicit function is any function can, that cannot be written in terms of y equals f of x. So any function 
that looks like x squared plus y squared equals 1, which you should know is the graph of a circle of radius 1. Or x plus 2xy minus y squared equals 3 are also or is also an implicitly defined function. Okay? So implicitly defined functions are functions that are defined in terms of both x and y where neither uh, x nor y can be separated out. Um, without having two parts of the equation. The, the benefit of implicit functions is that, for instance, the circle, if you were to solve for y, gives you two functions. So implicit functions can define more than a single function and typically fail uh, that vertical line test. Right. Another good implicit function um, might look something like this. Right, here's my x and y. And we're actually going to explore that function or the, uh, the graph of this function uh, tomorrow in class. So, again, fails the vertical line test. Uh, this function is defined in both terms of x and y. And as you can tell, um, represents a multitude of functions that together uh, create a very interesting looking graph. Implicit differentiation is just the differentiation of implicit functions, right? So uh, not too much um, to say about that. Uh, a, a, a quick example here would be if we had x times y equals 1. Uh, this obviously could be solved for y and then differentiated. Uh, however, it's, it, we don't need to anymore, uh, knowing how to use dif uh, implicit differentiation. Um, I would actually just get first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first, which is just 1. And then I could solve in terms of, uh, oops, y prime. Now, if that didn't make sense right away, that's okay, because this is what we're going to be doing today in today's examples. So stay tuned. OK, so for the first example, um, I'm asked to find dy dx. Now, like I said in the warm up, it's really important that we understand this notation and what all the pieces mean, because it's going to help um, when I have more complicated problems or when, a, when an implicit function is not de de, um, defined in terms of x and y, maybe it's defined in terms of S's and T's or R's and T's or P's and Q's or whatever. Um, so I'm asked to find the derivative of Y with respect to X. However, my function is defined implicitly. It, I cannot solve this for Y and then just take uh, the derivative of this side with all the X's in it, use my, my, my basic differentiation rules and then get a DY DX on the other side. So I have to, I have to integrate or uh, derive this implicitly. So um, it's really important when you're doing implicit differentiation to just think about uh, taking the derivative of each term individually. Okay. So look, let's look at just the first term here. Okay. Oops. Not the first time we've made that mistake. Um, the derivative of x to the third with respect to x is 3x squared okay. minus now we're going to take the derivative of this term right now this term uh, looks like it's just 2xy um, and maybe the derivative is just 2 right uh, 2 times y or something but What's going on here is that I have a function y times another function 2x. So I really do have a product rule. Okay. So we're going to do the first 2x times the derivative of the second. 
Now the second is y. What's the derivative of y with respect to x? It's dy dx. And a quick shorthand way of writing that is y prime. Okay. So I have the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. The derivative of 2x is just 2. Now we're going to look at the last term here, y to the fourth. And that's the function y raised to the fourth power. Because I'm taking the derivative with respect to x, I have to treat this as a chain rule. So the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside, which is the derivative of y with respect to x, which is y prime. The derivative of any constant is zero. Easy. All right, now, I'm asked to find dy dx, or y prime. So I do need to solve this for y prime. So I'm going to try to get all the y primes over here, everything that doesn't have a y prime on the other side. So let's go with 4y cubed y prime minus 2x y prime equals um, 2y minus 3x squared. That's just me moving terms around from one side of the equation to the other. And I wanted all the terms that had a y prime in them on one side. Now I can pull a y prime out. And divide both sides by what was left inside here. And I get my answer. Remember, y prime and dy dx are the same thing. So I have found dy dx. Okay, so another example involving implicit differentiation. This time we're going to introduce some trig stuff. Okay. Not that it's any more complicated. It's just that you have to be able to remember um, the derivative of some of your basic trig functions. So, remember, term by term, the derivative of x times sine of y, I have a product rule here. So first times the derivative of the second. Now, since I'm taking the, deriv the derivative of the second thing is a, um, has a y in it, I am going to end up with a, uh, a y prime. Okay? So first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first, which is just 1 because it's x plus the next term. Okay. So the derivative of cosine to y, again, it has a y in it, so I need to treat this as a chain rule. So negative sine 2y times the derivative of the inside, which is 2y prime. Okay, and the derivative of cosine y is the derivative of cosine Remember, y is a function, and it's inside of something. So I have another y prime to deal with. All right, so now we're going to put things together. I remember I want any term that has a y prime on it and, uh, and on one side and everything else to be on the other. So I have y prime x 
cosine y minus 2y prime sine 2y plus sine y, oops, let's put the y prime up, up front, plus y prime sine of y. That was that term. I added it to get to the other side. And this is the other thing um, that I haven't used, and I'm going to put them over there. Negative sine of y. Great. So I'm going to factor out the y prime and then divide by everything that was left. x cosine y minus 2 sine 2y plus sine y. And there is my answer. It does look messy, but it's really not as messy as some problems could be. So just like explicit functions, explicitly defined functions, I can find the second derivative of an implicitly defined function. It's a little more work, but the concepts and the ideas and the rules are all the same. So I'm asked to find the second derivative of y with respect to x. It's not with respect to x squared. This is just the notation. So if we remember that dy dx was equal to y prime, then d, uh, d2y, or the second derivative of y, is really just y double prime. So that's what I'm looking for. Okay. So let's get started. Uh, remember, term by term, first, uh, first term is a product rule. So first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first, which is just one. I have a chain rule here. So it's the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside, right? Now I'm going to go ahead and solve this for y prime because it's going to make things easier, okay? So x y prime plus 4y cubed y prime equals negative y. Factoring out the y prime, and then dividing by what's left, I get negative y over um, x plus 4y cubed. All right. Now, the second derivative is going to involve quotient rule. So y double prime. And I'm going to I'm going to take this over to here. Okay. Y double prime is going to be equal to the bottom times the derivative of the top which is negative y prime minus the top, which makes this a plus, times the derivative of the bottom, which is going to be 1 plus 12y squared y prime all over bottom squared. Okay, now uh, we don't want the y primes in my y double prime equation, so I have to get rid of them. Good way of getting rid of them is plugging in what I know y prime is. 
Now is where it gets messy. So, y double prime is equal to, I'm going to sort of switch these things around so that my negative sign isn't sticking out the front. Uh, y, I'm also going to distribute y plus 12y cubed times y prime, which is this. minus y prime times x plus 4y cubed. So y prime is ooh, uh, negative y over times x plus 4y cubed. All over, x plus 4y cubed squared. All right. So we are not going to take this any further, or you don't need to take this any further. You could um, if you needed to do something with this, uh, some sort of application problem, um, like might be coming up in the next few chapters, or excuse me, next few sections. Um, there's no reason that we couldn't uh, try to simplify this even further, uh, but for the purposes of um, finding the second derivative, this is what would be required. Okay? Um, I don't even want to try to simplify that, so I wouldn't expect you to try to simplify that. But it is necessary to get rid of the y primes when I have an equation involving y double prime. So I did have to substitute back in what I knew y prime was. That is necessary. So for the last example, a little bit of an application, um, find the equation of the line tangent to uh, the graph x to the 2 thirds, y to the 2 thirds uh, equals 5. Um, and I'm given uh, a point to find the tangent line. So we've done this kind of problem before. But now we're using implicit differentiation. So the first thing we need is a slope. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start taking the derivative. And then the implicit differentiation part uh, treated in a very similar way. But don't forget to, to be multiplying by the derivative of y, which is y prime. Okay. Now, since we want the slope uh, dy dx, we do need to solve for y prime. Okay. Now, I'm not going to worry about simplifying this because I'm, I'm just going to plug in uh, x and y. Uh, and solve for the, the for dy dx. So let's see, negative two thirds. Uh, one to the negative one third is just one, and eight to the negative one third. That's just the cube root of eight uh, is one half. So I have a negative two thirds times 3 over 2 times 2 over 1 is negative 2. So that is my slope. The equation of the line then becomes y minus y1 equals negative 2x minus x1. 